Good morning. So we have over 140 in the church now. So that's a, an example of how the retaping and the way we're flexing is able to get more people physically in the church for our celebrations on Sunday. Um, we had one internment this week. Uh, Ronald Christie, his funeral was in Oakville in January, but family plot was here at St. Mary's, and so we pray for the Christie family and for Ronald at this time. Over the next couple of weeks, uh, the next month or two, you will see uh, that uh, we will be having um, additional collections, if you will, that will be just reminding you if you haven't already given your donations for the Holy Land, so that's the Good Friday collection, or the um, or your first Share Life collection. Um, those are coming up next weekend. And if you uh, put an envelope for Lebanon, you can put your name and address on it and just put Lebanon Relief and it will go for the emergency relief in Lebanon. And you can drop those collections into the regular baskets that are here at the entrance and at the exit and we will sort them out uh, so that the right collections go to the right places. I want to thank you. So many of you have been already doing that, making, uh, if you will, uh, catching up with the different envelopes and the, and the different uh, special collections that are held each year that really support a number of uh, places. Uh, and so Share Life and the Holy Land and Lebanon are the, in the next weekend. Um, in two weeks, we're going to be having our uh, annual St. Vincent de Paul collection, and so we just ask you to be generous. The, uh, the, this has been a hard time, especially for people experiencing poverty, and so we ask you to uh, be generous to the St. Vincent de Paul collection. That envelope is in your box of envelopes. We have a real bulletin now, so effective today, we have a real printed paper bulletin that you'll be able to get on the way out. So from now on, you'll be able to get a bulletin on the way out on Sundays. What, you, what, what I found was that there's a beautiful prayer in the bulletin uh, today, um, a prayer as I put on my mask. And it, it's a, a beautiful prayer that was written by the Right Reverend Richard Bott, who's the moderator of the United Church in Canada. And uh, it, it's a, a beautiful prayer, and maybe you'll even want to clip it out and put it wherever you put your mask on, like, it, you know, maybe at the front door or something like that, uh, that you would say that prayer each day. Uh, it's the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Uh, Father Neomal, our associate, new associate pastor, is uh, the preacher, the homilist, and he's presiding today. It's the 23rd Sunday. I invite you to stand and sing together. Uh, no, hum along with the gathering song. Gather us in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends, in a moment of silence, let us accept our unworthiness before the Lord, as we are going to offer the supreme sacrifice of Jesus.
you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, So you, O son of man, I made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways. The wicked person shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked person to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, they shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Listen to his voice, pardon not 
your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Mass in the desert, when your forebears put me to the test, when they tried me though they saw my word. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. The word of the Lord. Reconcile the world to himself. And the good news of reconciliation he has entrusted to us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke to his disciples. If your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If he or she listens to you, you have regained your brother or sister. But if the person does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the person refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if that person refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord.
then I can live without my legs. It's a true short story that I am going to lay out before you. Once a boy went out of, out of his home to do something that his parents felt was wrong. He met with an accident and he lost both of his legs. Being aware of his son's situation, parents rushed to the hospital. As they walked in to the hospital room, he asked them, Mom, Dad, do you forgive me? They ran up to him, hugged him. Both together said, of course, we have forgiven you. Afterwards, he said, then I can live without my legs. The common theme of today's readings is God's command concerning our spiritual responsibility and individual accountability for others. This responsibility arises from our identity as God's children and baptized Christians. Our good Lord today invites us to correct others when they offend us. At the same time, we are reminded to be humble enough to say sorry when we offend others and to forgive others when we are offended. Dear friends, as we live in this era, sometimes we may tend to think, I don't have any right to interfere in others' uh, personal things. Or sometimes if someone approaches me, I may say, mind your business. At the same time, out of humility, we may think to ourselves, I am not worthy enough. I am a sinful man. How can I correct others? But our good Lord reminds us that this is one of our Christian responsibilities to help others, not to humiliate or to disgrace or to embarrass but out of love to get into the right track. We extend our helping hand prudently, lovingly, and patiently. If you remember the first murder that took place in the Bible in Genesis chapter 4, between two brothers, Cain and Abel. Cain killed his brother. He went against his own blood out of jealousy. God asked him, where is your brother? Cain said, brother, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Of course you are. And right now we are our brother's keepers. We have a responsibility entrusted to us. That's a spiritual responsibility and accountability. To extend our helping hands when they sin. In today's gospel, our Lord says, if someone offends us, approach him and try to convince him how we are hurt and how it affects his spiritual growth. Conversation between two of them is so confidential. 
our good Lord says, if he listens to you, you have regained your brother. I love these beautiful words of Jesus. You have regained your brother. My dear brothers and sisters, we are fragile human beings. We tend to make mistakes. We don't do intentionally. They may happen without our knowledge. Because we are human. If we understand my brother, and if they understand me, we forgive each other. We accept each other as we are, with our defects, as God, as God accepts you and me at the confession. If he does not listen, our good Lord says, take one or two as witnesses. Try to convince him. He doesn't listen. Then, inform the church. During Jesus' time, the community, the authority in the community, and now, the church. Dear friends, when we offend others, it affects the church. Why? Church means the mystical body of Jesus. We all are members of Jesus' body. And we are called to build up Jesus' mystical body in our own way, in our own vocation. The way we lead our Christian lives. If we hurt someone, if we offend someone, we hurt Jesus' body. So church is ever ready to help us, her children, whenever the time we have prayed. Jesus continues, if he doesn't even listen to the church, consider him a Gentile and a tax collector. What does it mean? Who were tax collectors during Jesus' time? They were considered as public sinners. Do you think that our good Lord is asking us to consider them as sinners? I tried first time, second time, third time. This guy is not listening to me. I don't have any business with you. No more. No, 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 no. I will explain it to you. Jesus came to this world. God became man for sinners. He saved all of us. When we stand before God, we are unworthy. If we read the Holy Scriptures, especially the Gospels, the life of Jesus, he was spending his time with sinners, and Pharisees told him that he was a friend of sinners eating and drinking with sinners. And Jesus himself said, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. You may remember when Peter approached the Lord, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother who sins against me? Seven times? Then Jesus says, no, 70 times 7. We need to forgive our brothers and sisters who offend us unceasingly. It's a continuous effort. Of course, we may not be able to go after always, trying two, three times, yet we need to pray for their conversion. Because as God's children, our target is heaven and salvation. We are not marching towards that target alone. We are not selfish. We need my family members, my community members, and my friends. We all should be there one day, enjoying the presence of God in heaven. Gladys Hines 
He's the widow of Australian missionary, Graham Steins. Graham had been serving in India for 15 years. Gladys and Graham. Service in India was so marvelous, incredible, especially for lepers. Graham was burnt alive along with his two sons. Shortly after the sentencing of her husbands and kids murderers, she issued a statement saying that she had forgiven those killers and had no bitterness towards them. In 2004, the media in India described this woman as the best known Christian in India after Mother Teresa. To err is human, to forgive divine. Please stand. Let us profess our faith. Let us recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's care, we bring our needs and the needs of our neighbor before the Lord. For, pardon me, for Pope Francis, all bishops and priests call to model a spirit of unity and love as they shepherd the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For wisdom, good discernment, and fortitude for all who hold positions of leadership in our societies and countries. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation on Labor Day, that all work may be directed to God's glory. For the unemployed, for those whose businesses have closed, and for all who suffer food or housing insecurity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all educators, students, support staff, and families returning to school, college, or university, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us to grow in love of our neighbor, for courage and charity of heart to stand up for justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose mental health is threatened by isolation, anxiety, depression, or addiction. For those suffering from abuse or homelessness, that they all might see the face of God in caring people around them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, for those working on a vaccine, for all frontline workers and all who have had medical treatment delayed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, including David Samuel, Sheila LePage, Mary Keeler, and for those who, for those we have promised to pray for, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, including Patricia Wicks, Ronald Christie, Marie Hubbard, and Carol Ann Clayton. And for all who mourn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion, may our ears be open to receive your word and our mouths to proclaim our faith. Hear our prayers that we might be a sign of your blessings to all whom we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through christ our lord the lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the lord our god it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed a man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works, through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim, therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be. Christ, 
Lamb of God. And take away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. truth and love. Lord Jesus Christ, gather us together, make us one bread, one body, in your love we do proclaim you the same.
Jesus Christ, gather us together, make us one bread, one body, in your Let us pray. Grant that you are faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament. May so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just a couple of notes. Uh, as schools return this week, we just keep our students, our caretakers, our teachers, our administrative staff all in our prayers. Uh, we Each week we have a Christian meditation on Tuesday morning at 1030 online. And so you can talk to Catherine to get a link for that. Um, this week, the alumni <clears throat> writing group is going to meet in person uh, Thursday afternoon at 1 o'clock in the parish hall. And we now have a real bulletin, a printed bulletin. You can get it on your way out, either on this here or on the tables at the exit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.
So we invite you to make sure you put the kneeler down, please. Those in section 